All right, so welcome everybody um, to today's teaching and learning call. Today is uh, June 2nd, and I'm Loma Hodges. I'll be facilitating the call today. Um, the Etherpad link is in the chat, so if you haven't signed in yet, please do. And um, as we normally do, we'll start off with just a few announcements. Uh, the big announcement is that Alpen Aperio is next week, so hopefully you're registered. If not, there's still time to register. It's very affordable because it is fully online, and um, it should be a good program. We've got lots of uh, good breakout sessions, <clears throat> and there's a bunch of lightning talks and some activities planned. So it should be a really good event, and I hope that um, that you guys are planning to attend. And um, you know, feel free to tell your friends and get other people to register if they've not yet already. Um, okay, so today. Um, does anybody else have any announcements, by the way, before we dive into our presentation? Oh, one other thing I should note is that we are planning for the 21.1 release um, at the end of this week. So we're targeting Friday. Um, so hopefully it'll be released and out the door um, before Open Apero next week. That's the plan anyway. But he's waiting on that dot one <clears throat> release. It should be out shortly. Okay, so if there are no other announcements, I will go ahead and introduce um, Michael Green. He's going to give us a, um, a demo on the forum's next project, which is a very exciting project for a, a new uh, forum's threaded discussion type tool that um, he's spearheading at Duke. And um, I will give Michael a presenter rights here so that he can share his screen or whatever he needs to do. So it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Wilma. Thanks, everyone, for your time and attention today. Let's uh, go to share and we'll just dig into some of the links that I have in the Etherpad. Um, so I like to start with this because it's really the why of, of the project for us. So. Um, I'd be curious if I can get a plus one in the chat. Um, so I'll, I'll do that matrix thing for a second, sorry. Um, plus one in the chat, if you have been dealing with Piazza issues over the past six to eight months, Piazza business model changes, Piazza pricing changes, anything related to Piazza. And uh, not plus ones. So I will, uh, <laughs> minus ones. So I'll, I'll dig into that a little bit. And I think Adam, you might've heard my spiel on this uh, at a meeting a few weeks ago. So I apologize for uh, the duplication there. But at Duke, uh, Piazza is a question and answer tool that has been used by our, our computer science faculty mainly, but over the pandemic, it did grow outside of uh, computer science a little bit. And so it's uh, it is an LTI tool in our Sakai instance, and uh, it's it's Q and A, so it's it's kind of like forums, um, uh, but it's it's different, and uh, and it has you know grown and grown and grown and grown, and it's been always marketed as free forever, and the way they maintain that free forever is they uh, have students opt into this Piazza Careers product where they sell the student data to the people on the back end. And so it's never been our, our favorite uh, tool from that perspective, um, but it's kind of been a, you know, it's not really broke, so don't fix it kind of situation. Uh, during the pandemic, that business model stopped working for them and they decided to do a couple of things. And the first of which was to just throw uh, online advertising in the product. And if you know how online advertising works based on your personal browsing history, you might understand why that would be an issue to see online ads inside your ed tech tool, inside your learning management system, inside a class. So um, that lasted a week and that was a, um, you know, thankfully many faculty rose up and said that's unacceptable and uh, they took those down. But then they came knocking with a six figure price tag and uh, we, we just, we could not negotiate successfully. And so in December, I started having these conversations with Josh saying, you know, on the roadmap, we have this big thing about forums. And at Duke, we have, uh, I mean, you know, 
those of you who know Chris Lorch, he was in the forums modernization group for you know a couple of years, and we've been thinking about forums for a while, and we have this Piazza problem, and so why don't we kind of line those puzzle pieces up and do a big play with forums? And so that's what the forums.next project where it came from, and and so our goal here is really to kind of do two things. It is to replace forums, but also replace Piazza. And, and so it's a multi-purpose tool. And, uh, you know, certainly a th thank you to, to NYU who kind of uh, helped spurn this idea, I guess. I mean, we, we, we saw their conversations tool a few years ago and we thought, oh, that's pretty interesting having mul multiple types of, of conversations inside a tool. And, and we kind of baked some of that into this uh, tool for sure. So we've been working on this for a couple months now. Uh, it's a big team. And, uh, and that comes with its own complexities, but uh, I, I like to highlight this a little bit because of the kind of the variety of experience, right? And so one thing we're trying to do, certainly from a Sakai marketing perspective is I think really interesting. And from a product development perspective is we've got folks doing uh, literature review about, you know, online discussion tools. We've got, um, you know, f a group of creative, design and usability experts that are doing the visual design and helping design all of our usability testing and perform those tests and, and analyze those tests. Uh, and, and then we've got a variety of other folks who are just, you know, also um, just helping out with this project, bringing a wide array of expertise. We've got six, uh, five pilot faculty and one kind of uh, mega TA uh, that are deep partners with us on this project. And, and those are the folks that are kind of, meet, we're meeting with them every week to kind of dig in into the problem space. So that's what this document is. And it doesn't update much anymore, but this is kind of what we use to kind of get the resources. So let me quickly check over here, nothing in the chat. So I, to avoid your matrix uh, you know, loop there, I'm, I'm not viewing the chat. So if, if you unmute, ask your question, or I'll, I'll get to it as I check back regularly. So that, that's what that is. If you haven't already, you know, you can click on our demo. Uh, you know, huge thanks to Longsight and, and Adrian, who has been the uh, the person who has been writing the code for this. Um, I linked there a, uh, a an instructor account and a student account. And let's see, has anybody gone in yet? No, cool. So you you should see this Sakai community place. Um, if we get, you know, six people logging in as the instructor at once, it may not work super great. Uh, this is a this is a prototype. I just want to say that out outright. Um, and so it is it is buggy. It is not ready for production. Stuff doesn't work as expected, but stuff does work. And so I welcome you to start playing around with it and seeing where what we've got so far. I could do a quick demo. Um, so if I create a topic, you'll see this is kind of what I meant by, you know, question is is the stuff we're tailoring to, to replace Piazza. Discussion is the stuff we're tailoring to replace forums. And, and I'll say up front that our goal is not to replace 100% of the functionality of either of those tools. So th this, is, this is meant to be a lighter weight replacement to both of those tools. And, uh, you know, that, that requires us to, to lose some of those edge case features. And, and that's, our, that's our approach here. Over time, I'm sure some of them will get added back, but the, the base release that we plan on putting out will be a much lighter weight um, tool. So if I just quickly ask uh, uh, a question. Uh, and, uh, and then I'll give it a tag. Let's see, we've got, this is a, just make this a general tag. I post it to everyone. Um, I'm not going to pin it. I'm an instructor. Well, I'm the admin, but instructors have some of these options, um, and then students have the anonymous options. But I'll but I'll just post and I'll do the first question here. And then if anybody wants to log in with these credentials, Sakai student, and then the password is Sakai or Sakai instructor and um, password Sakai, you should be able to log into that link and. And, uh, and post some, some responses to that. You could see the answer to this question list, right? And so we're going for kind of this two column layout by default, um, changing some things from the way that, you know, you normally see a UI in Sakai, right? And so we've got some tag and filter boxes up here that we're adding things to. Tags are a huge piece of this tool. 
All right, so you might have saw that that quick list there when I was um, creating the post. So instead of kind of having a very forced hierarchy of you know forum, then topic, then conversation, then post, then reply, then react, you know, it, it's a, it's a lot lighter weight in that way, right? We have this mechanism called tags. Uh, we're going to throw some in out of the box. We're going to allow the instructors to delete those and replace them with whatever they want. If you want to have, you know, 50 tags, it'll support that. If you want to have two tags, it'll support that. And and we think that's kind of the the right level of organization mechanism to to throw at this. If you wanted to, um, you know, have a forum, and then have all the students reply to your post, that would kind of echo a little bit how you might currently use a forum in Sakai. Um, if you wanted to have a tag. And then you could go into lessons and say, post you know, your response to this prompt under this tag. You could do something like that as well. So we're trying to leave a lot of flexibility in how you might apply the tool in your, in your class. And then filters are, are you know, this list will grow uh, quite a bit, but it's kind of what you'd expect, right? I need to know what I haven't read yet. I need to know who's got a question. I need to answer that kind of stuff. I mean, F5 and see if anybody's oh yeah cool somebody's of course it was in the in it was in the syllabus I knew somebody would post that thank you um, and then this is the kind of thing that you might see from a question and answer tool like Ed discussion or Piazza right is that oh this is the correct answer uh, and this is a you know I will verify this and so the instructor user you could you could verify that I'll even come in here and I'll post another answer. You know, I, I'm not sure it was right. I mean, you, you get these Q&A and like students start answering themselves uh, or they answer each other, whatnot, a TA might come in, right? But there's probably one one answer that's that's correct, right? And so you would verify that and then that would be highlighted and, and bumped to the top and lots of things uh, to kind of show students, hey, this is this is what you should look at. We're, we're adding a variety of uh, engagement mechanisms like upvoting and, and emoji reactions that you might see on, on tools that, of course, not all that's, that's in there yet, but um, that's, uh, that's the kind of the highlight right there. If I go add a, a discussion, you know, it's gonna look very similar, but this would be where you would see things also like uh, I wanna grade a discussion, right? That is a, one clear thing we've heard from the faculty is that you know, questions are meant to be more of a safe space and it's not it's not a graded space. And then these threaded questions, yeah, that's where I could do things like uh, attach it to a grade book, attach a rubric. I could have a lot more requirements and I'll, I could lock it down after a date. All those things that we might typically think about in a, in a forum, uh, that those will be options that we add on this post type that you wouldn't see on the question post type. So it's a little misleading now because they're the exact same, but they'll be tailored uh, forms, tailored pages here as you as you as we kind of build out the the tool. Let me check back over into chat for anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, it depends on if you like crust, Charles. I uh, so so that's the demo. Feel free to play around, get a feel for for it. Um, let me let me open up the mockups. Right, so this is where we're headed. Um, and you should be able to see this as well. These are view viewable by anybody. Um, and we Figma is an online web design tool, and we have a Sakai community group um, that I'm that I'm in, and I'm getting Sean Foster in, and we're trying to, you know, the, these things live in that group. And and when the Duke team is done, then these assets will live with the Sakai community. These are meant to be owned by the community. Um, and so if you click mockups here. I'm logged in, so I, I, you you won't quite see all of the stuff that I do. But um, you, you can zoom in here and use this. This is kind of the this is from the design team and, and what we're planning, um, right? So some things that I didn't talk about yet add to my list. So I have the kind of a bookmarking feature, the reactions that I mentioned. If you've used them on Facebook, GitHub, we're, we're taking a lot of inspiration from GitHub actually, in and how they do reactions. Um, and so this is kind of the polished design. Uh, what we have in the prototype is just that, it's the prototype design just to get that basic functionality working. And so uh, we'd be continuing to, to refine that. Another thing I, I kind of briefly mentioned and didn't really say what I meant to say was there's no tabs, right? One of the things you're used to seeing in a Sakai tool is the tabs across the top. 
and and that was very purposeful and it's actually an idea that sean foster and i have been toying around with in the sakai ui steering group is is what would our lms look like without the tabs and so generally speaking we we think that these two pieces of the ui could replace the tabs and you're either creating content you're either editing content that's already created that you access from this main ui or you're you know doing something else and that would most likely live in this settings area that you would click um and let's see what else might i want to talk about in this particular design yeah so we we uh we tested this design with our faculty on friday and i have not had a chance to review all the other faculty uh that we had we had we did three tests on Friday, uh, and I, I led one, and then we had kind of a group discussion afterwards, and all three faculty said, you know, even as is, they would use this in their class in the fall. And that was a really exciting piece of feedback to get, and because we, we know we have a long way to go, and we have a lot of polish and, and, and stuff that we're going to add to it before fall, so that, that, was, that was pretty exciting. Um, so this is what Figma is, and this is why it exists. Uh, and then the other link that I, I gave you was to the um, create a post screen. So if, as we add things to this, you can come over to the mockups section. And then, oh, this is good. I can kind of show off, right? Like students, they have the anonymous option and the post to option, but they, uh, they don't have some of these options, right? They can't pin a post, right? Or and as we add more things, they can't. Um, you know, to, especially to the like the discussion type or the the more the, what resembles forums, the, the, there'll be a lot of options, grading and things like that that the students won't be able to access, of course. So uh, so that's those two Figma links, and then the last link that I I want to kind of walk through before we just do any kind of Q and A is um, or open it up further for discussion is Airtable, right? So we are not yet using Jira for product management here. Um, but we are uh, doing product management and tracking, and we are doing that as open as we can, and we're using Airtable to do that. And so this is our kind of database for product managing, and you should, again, have read access to this. I have not quite figured out what to do with these assets when the Duke team, you know, says, says we're done. Uh, you know, once it's in the core code base, it'll move to Jira, and, and Jira will be our normal Jira process, but um, you know, do these things need to live on in any useful way? I, I'm not sure. We haven't had that discussion yet. Um, so this is a this is a database. It's Google Sheets on steroids, essentially. If you haven't used Airtable before, up here are these tabs that are a database, and I would I would recommend kind of the the to two to maybe take a look at today would be User Stories and Backbone. And so if you were uh, in the community a couple months ago, I led an exercise where we generated a bunch of user stories. And that was you know, via this form. And I need to actually get this link. Oh, I need to get this link via my logged in account. Sorry. Um, you can add a user story to the project even today, right? And so I will add a user story. Right. If you don't feel like the feature you want is represented, add it as a user story. Right. Um, anybody can do that. And thank you to everyone who has already done that. Um, and those get added, you know, here into this mega list. We've got 200 and at least 250. Um, and then we go through and categorize, sort them, and do all kinds of things to them. And uh, one of the things we do to them is we're breaking them into features. Right. And so I think, um, you know, that's what this by by feature is. And uh, we're also tying them to things like the lit review. Right. So um, the research connections view would do that. And so here as an instructor, we find a good one here and to quickly find anonymous. So there's definitely a knot of anonymous. There's a lot of research to back up uh, the anonymous posting recommendations, right? So I can hit space bar or click this little double uh, arrow. Open up one of these user stories and say, oh, these are the research recommendations that back up this user story, right? So that's one of the ways we're tying things together. Again, I think that's a really interesting marketing 
tale to tell. Another thing we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks is is values. So all of these user stories that oh cool people have already started that. Um, all of these user stories have values baked into them inherently, and we're, we've got a group. And David Wiedemann, who some of you might have met in the community, um, is going to lead us through an exercise to to code those and, and be another layer of you know what what are the values we're baking into this tool. They came from the users, right, via the user stories, and then we're tying them to all these features. And so, um, sorry, this is not a view that's super useful, but we could maybe do uh, something like this. And so then what we do, right, is we have user stories. We turn that into a feature, and then we start nailing down all the requirements for that feature. And so this is, you know, it's been a very iterative process. We This is something new that we're um, I'm actually going to be discussing with the design and dev team later today, the, this current model. And um, so, yeah, so so this is what Airtable is. There's a tons and tons of stuff in there. Um, it's always evolving. If you ever have a question about what the heck's going on in there or I want to see something and I don't have a clue what I'm looking at, don't hesitate to email me or, you know, get on the Aperio Slack. Um, I, I would say that this all by backbone is a pretty useful view. It would show you all of the features we have planned and then the user stories that back them up. That, that's that probably be a pretty useful view. Um, so that's what I had planned today. I'm happy to dig into anything else. I would love to you know open the floor to any uh, conversation. I'm going to stop sharing for now, but I'm happy to reshare if we need to dig into something. Thanks, Michael, for a great overview. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, maybe you're kind of letting it kind of soak in a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot there. Um, just a couple of, of quick uh, notes. We are going to be doing some usability testing for the community members. So I'm going to be doing those um, in a couple of weeks. And I've actually, let me get the link here. Um, I've set up a. Uh, Calendly link to make appointments for usability testing. So um, there should be half hour appointments. And we would really love to get faculty because um, they're going to be the, the intended um, users of the tool. So we'd love to get faculty um, signed up for these so we can get some true end users. Um, although certainly other folks in the community are welcome to sign up as well. Um, but uh, I'll be running them during that, that week of the 21st. And uh, there'll be you know half hour scripted one on one appointments. So we'll be going through a usability script that the team has developed and has already used with some of the folks at Duke. Uh, so we'll be modeling their approach to just get some additional um, feedback from users outside of Duke, uh, just to see you know how well it would be um, received, how well it would fit the needs at other institutions. So, um, so that's available. Please circulate that link to your faculty. And um, another link to circulate, if you have folks that are interested in um, any type of usability uh, research, surveys, um, you know, focus groups, any upcoming um, usability tests that we decide to do, I started a new um, Google group, and if you if you send a message to that address there, Sakai User Research Group plus subscribe at aperio.org, it'll subscribe you to the Sakai User Research Group email group in, in uh, the Google groups. And Josh and I came up with this uh, following with the, the faculty showcase as a way to try to reach out to faculty directly to let them know about opportunities to provide feedback on things that are in development. So um, again, it's a very low volume uh, list. So it would just be the occasional invitation to participate in something. But if you could circulate that email out to folks who might be interested, that would be wonderful. So um, just wanted to get those two things out there while I was thinking about it. And I will let you um, folks chime in on what you think of the forum's next project so far. I saw a little bit in the chat from Adam.
So one of the, you know, I'll, I'll ask a provocative question, you know, what, what's it going to take for this to replace forums at your institution, right? Because that, that is our end goal here, you know. Um, um, and this is the start of, of those many conversations to be had about how we go about that. Um, you know, and there's certainly a variety, right? I mean, we could do it like Gradebook where we have a, you know, forums NG and, and there's two tools and the, you choose, we could do that for a release. We could, we have, you know, we haven't had any of these conversations yet. I don't know what's best. I would certainly want, you know, the opinion of the, the core team and, and those of you who manage implementations to, to express your, your, your opinion on how we might want to handle that moving forward. But, um, you know, an overall timeline at Duke is we're, we're planning to deploy this in the fall. And we'll certainly continue to update it over the year. And then I'm assuming that we'll try to get this into the 20, what version will that be? I mean, it'll be sometime in the spring, I imagine, where we'll really want to put this in the community version. I, I don't know if it'll be ready before that. I think it'd be a pretty big stretch to try to get it in before we cut the branch in August or September for Sakai 22. But um, I, I, I guess we could we could do that, Josh, to say in 22. By 22, you mean August. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking that we would uh, slip the MVP into 22 and then look to make improvements from there. I mean, I suppose that's open to discussion, you know, but I, you know, otherwise we run the risk of waiting an additional year before people have the ability to, to use forums next. It's true. It's true. I think that would make a lot of sense if, uh, you know, we'd keep forums in the code base with that strategy, right? We, we would kind of like dashboard and um yeah i think we'd have to because right. the, the features wouldn't be you know complete parity between the two tools so people that relied on something that was in forums and isn't in the new tool would need you know well need Michael, you were asking what would be necessary for this to replace forums i mean the nice thing about this tool is that it's fluid it supports for tagging it supports for searching but i think for faculty who want more structured or topic centered discussions that there probably need to be a lot more features grafted in. Um, this is really fluid and, you know, looks like Outlook Web Access, for instance, so it's intuitively obvious what you're doing. But um, one of the features that our faculty had wanted uh, when we initially went to Sakai was what we call post first discussion forums, where you have to post before you can read. and you know, that functionality would have to be grafted in. A uh, request that's still pending is the ability to lock a forum so that way people can't add new posts, but they can read what's historical. So there's definitely going to be feature creep around this, and I see, you know, at least both tools being necessary at initial implementation until there's feature parity. So I'm I'm happy to say on those two specific things, those are already user stories that we're planning to uh, to implement. Uh, hopefully by fall, I think those are both scheduled for for this release. But um, I think um, you know to, I certainly agree with you to a point. We we are making this gamble that you know a, a a more intuitive design that's that's lightweight and and feels easier to use is going to um, win over 100 percent feature priority with piazza and current sky forms and that's that is a gamble you know um but it's it's one that we've certainly seen work outside of the lms market and so that's um that's you know that's where my head is at at least currently we we, we do have definitely have tons of features left to add um including those two you specifically mentioned but um <laughs> Here's a question for you out of curiosity. Do you see this as being a single tool instance in the sidebar? Or do you think that there might be purpose in allowing the tool to be added multiple times over? Because for instance, I saw question versus discussion, and I'm wondering if you could have different permissions around different instances of the tool. 
Yeah, that's a great question. That we, it has come up. Um, we're we're currently planning to to keep it all in one tool, but Adrian has already said, you know, we could do it the other way, right? I mean, we could have, um, you know, if if what you wanted was separate kind of inboxes, so to speak, and all the questions lived here, uh, and then all the the threads or the you know discussion forum type things lived in another tool in the sidebar, uh, we we could totally do it that way. Um, we you know we envision other post types coming in the future as well, right? Maybe you want a debate style and, and there's different, you know, it's a different use case. It requires different options, right? Um, you know, at some point, maybe it doesn't make sense to have it all in a single tool and it makes a lot more sense to have it, um, you know, have multiple instances in the toolbar. And as, um, you know, Josh, I don't know if you want to speak uh, to that comment in the chat particularly, but I mean, you know, connecting this tool with with the rest of the Sakai tools in a deep way is is key as well, right? I mean, that's one of the reasons, you know, Duke wants to 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 do it this way instead of to, you know just paying Piazza and moving on, right? I mean, there are things that having a tool like this inside your LMS can do that an LTI tool can't, and we're, we 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 got to make sure we do those things. Do you have an opinion on your question, Adam, or was it was it you know your your first first thought? Because we we don't really know which way would be best: one tool in the sidebar or or split every post type. I mean, certainly the Sakai default I think would be maybe to have a different tool in the sidebar for each post type. Um, I'm I'm just not fully convinced that that's the right choice at this time. But I I think usability testing might. Um... Uh, answer that question for us, or other people will, you know, chime in their opinions. I, I think it's partially a question of the instructor's um, acceptance of complexity <laughs> and how they would want to go about doing it. Uh, but uh, I, I can see both ways. One thing we're hearing from our faculty, and I'd be curious uh, if this resonates with you all, is that um, something that matters a great deal to them is kind of containing this in the tool. And although I'm sure they do want notifications and they want emails, they, they, they don't want this stuff to happen over their email. Uh, it's one of the reasons they use Piazza. And I, and I I mean, Piazza sends me emails when I test it, so I'm not sure how they've configured their notifications there. But they've told us time and time again, like what they don't—they don't want this tool kicking, you know, you out to my email. They—they they want it in the tool. This tool, Piazza in particular, that kind of tool is like the help desk for their class, and it's—it's it's very important to kind of serve as that function and 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 be. I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's something about the speed of reply or just, you know, but there's some kind of magic that Piazza fills in their class that a traditional forum doesn't fill or the email messages, announcement tools don't fill. Uh, it's been an interesting thing to kind of dig into. We haven't fully discovered the magic there, but I'd be curious if, if that resonates with anybody else at your institution. Is that, um, you know, everybody says they want notifications and we're going to bake that in and email and in-browser notifications are planned, but there's something to, to not overwhelming them via email, which maybe is happening currently with some of our tool set or certainly happens with other tools out there that they want to be sure to avoid.
does anyone else have any comments? I see a lot of typing going on in the chat, but it, it kind of got quiet. <laughs> Okay, well, um, if there's no other thoughts that you want to share right now, we can go ahead and, um, and move on to do um, a few JIRAs that we have in our parking lot. Um, and you will have another opportunity to provide feedback. We're, we're having a, um, a presentation, Michael Stone, of the president of the, a group from Duke, is doing a presentation at um, Open Aperio next week. Um, about the, this project, and uh, as I mentioned, we'll have some community testing coming up later in the month. So, um, if you want to have other folks who maybe aren't here today, you know, provide their feedback, that would be a great thing to encourage them to attend one of those events. Um, we're also at the UX call after this one. Um, Michael's given them an update as well, so you'll have some more opportunity if you plan to go to that call. So um, let's go ahead and move on to our JIRA. And let's see. Oh, wait, I see a little more chat from Mark. Um, he wanted to know about activities and analytics tracking. Yeah, we've, we've talked a little bit about what analytics people would want, um, but I don't know that we've nailed that down yet. So um, I'm sure Michael can provide you some more information on that. Um, we may also do a little bit of, of brainstorming at Open Aperio about analytics um, during some of the um, kind of open sessions. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take back presenter. Let's get my screen share going. Hang on one second. Screen share. Okay, um, I don't see Tim Tiffany here, so I'm going to skip hers because I prefer that she were here when we talk about some of those. And one of them, actually, I can't remember which one she specifically asked if we could talk about when she was here. So um, there's one about rubrics. I think this might have been a leftover from last time when we did a rubrics Jirapalooza. Um, so why don't we talk about the rubrics one that we didn't get to before, and that is um, SAK 43001. So that's uh, rubrics display total points when creating rubrics. So um, <clears throat> the description is, it would be helpful if the total number of points possible in that rubric would display, this would help when the instructor creates gradebook items. So they would see the total points of the rubric to match it with the gradebook. Um, it looks like, wait a minute, it looks like this one may already be resolved. Yeah, it looks like, wait, now this is marked as a duplicate. Okay. Um, So what do you guys think about the uh, the total number of points? Is that something that would be useful? Okay, could be handy. I 
don't think anybody has super strong opinions about this one. So <laughs> if you do, please add them to the comments on here. If there's a particular way that you'd like the, the total number of points um, to show up, or if you just want to express general agreement with this uh, particular, particular feature request, um, feel free to do that. And I'll paste that in the chat. directly to it. Um, let's see, a couple of people say that it would be useful. Yeah, I, I think it would be useful as well. Okay. Let's move on to, um, here's one from Marty. Is Marty here today? Right, we'll go ahead and talk about that one. So let me move this one up so I know that we talked about it. So let's talk about the question progress panel. Let's see if anybody has any thoughts on this one. Okay, so um, this one is a feature request about question types where students enter data into multiple fields like matching. Um, if they enter some, but not all the fields, it's reported as unanswered. Um, would uh, adding a third status, an incomplete status, um, be more accurate for those types of questions? Um, and he, he references situations where it might be better for the student, like for, for example, if they're penalized for uh, guessing. So what do you guys think? Do we need a third? Status? On the face of it, it seems like a minor change that would add utility to some of the customer base. Mm -hmm. Do you think that your faculty would use it or, or would they want it to, to show up that way? I don't think my faculty use matching types or um, negative scoring frequently. We've tried to actively dissuade them not to use negative scoring because they can get confused on what it means and inadvertently use negative scoring when they didn't mean to. Right. But for institutions that use matching or negative scoring, you know, as Marty outlines in the report, it kind of makes sense. I mean, to some extent, this is really more a student focused question anyway. Um, because this is what the student sees while they're taking the assessment. So instructors, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if some instructors aren't even aware of what the question progress panel looks like. Um, that's or what true. it says. So, so it's really a question of student utility as opposed to what the instructors think. Um, that being said, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it could be helpful. Anybody else? You guys are a quiet group today. <laughs> All right, so there's sort of lukewarm support from some folks. Everybody says he's not sure about it. Um, yeah, it really is a student facing option. Um, 
but it would kind of be determined by the types of questions that the faculty is using. So um, it would only be for, for ones like matching or I'm trying to think of other question types that would could be scored as incomplete. Possibly like a fill in the blank if it had multiple blanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying to think of something that could be partial as well, but that would that fit. Could get, that could get hairy, though, because you would have to differentiate between a fill in the blank with a single blank and a fill in the blank with multiple blanks. So the code would need to categorize the question, you know, contingent on each individual question type as to answered in progress or unanswered. Calculated questions can also have multiple answer fields. I think. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, Jordy asked that there's no penalty on matching types. I don't think so. Um, let's, is there an all or none, or is that, is that just multiple choice? I think for matching, it's you do have the choice for all completely right or partial. I think. I can't recall. I should know that. Jordy said it's just multiple choice, but. On 20. Yeah. I don't think that was a change in 21 that I recall. So if it's like that in 20, that's probably still the case. What do you guys think about incomplete as the label? That makes sense to differentiate it from unanswered, maybe partial. I don't know. I'm not sure if I like incomplete. Sorry about that dog barking. <laughs> um, okay, so in general, it sounds like we like the concept. Um, we're not 100% sold on the incomplete label. So I'll, I'll put a comment to that effect on the JIRA. And if anybody has any thoughts on a better label, um, feel free to add it to the comments. Um, so I think all of our other JIRAs are Tiffany related, <laughs> so we'll save those for Tiffany uh, Day. And um, if nobody else has anything else that they want to talk about, we can break just a few minutes early. So, any thoughts from anybody else? Suggestions for topics coming up? Our, our June 16th uh, session is open, so if anybody has something that they want to present, or if you maybe see something at open a period that you think would be great for a teaching and learning call, let us know. We'll try to recruit the, the speaker to come to one of our um, calls and, and do a session on it. 
Um, like I said, there's going to be lots of lightning talks, so you may hear just a little bit about something and want to know more. Uh, so keep your ears open for anything interesting like that that we can add to the agenda for an upcoming call. So um, with that, I appreciate all of you guys being here today. And thanks again to Michael for presenting um, about forums next. And we will see you guys again in two weeks with the next teaching and learning call. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.